Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of stage three of Paris Nice from Gien to Gien, the all important 14 and a half kilometer time trial, 102 meters elevation gain. And the big question of the day was could Michael Matthews retain his yellow jersey with that 14 second lead ahead of time trial specialists like Søren Anderson, Stefan Bissega, Dennis Campanas, and Remy Cavagna. Now if you want to hear a more detailed breakdown of the stage uploaded within two hours of the stage finish, obviously got the Lantern Rouge cycling podcast. We'll also have combined Terreno Adriatico and Paris Nice recaps starting from tonight. But Rowan Dennis was the first of the major contenders for the stage win to roll off the ramp. He wasn't a contender to take the yellow jersey. He'd lost, I think, nearly three minutes in the preceding two stages on GC. But he absolutely destroyed Jonas Ruch time. And Dennis even said, because he was on the hot seat for so long afterwards, because he went so early in the order, that he did 20 watts over his target power for this TT, setting a time of 17.47. That was the best for quite a while. The first of the GC contenders to roll out was Dennis' teammate Tao Gagenhart, who obviously defended his Malia Rosa in this Stage 21 Milano ITT back in 2020. But I don't know whether it was me overrating his TT from last year just because he beat Hindley by so much and Hindley's a really bad ITT rider, but Gagenhart didn't set a very good time today in Paris Nice. 31 seconds behind Rowan Dennis and over 20 seconds behind last year's Paris Nice winner Maximilian Schachmann, who once again set a pretty good time. Then it was time for Dutch Damien Lewis Stefan Kreisfeig to roll out, and can someone ASO UCI, you in the comments explain what is going on in the background of this picture. Kreisweig, the model of consistency, set a really good time as well, actually. Just six seconds behind Rowan Dennison, beat Schuckman by two seconds. One of the big contenders for the stage, Søren Kra Andersen, then rolled out, I think on the Scott TT bike for the first time, and he set a super hot time, powered by Saxo Bank, now DSM, beating Dennis by two and a half seconds and moving into the hot seat. Next, it was Primoz Roglic of the main players, the favourite for the Paris Nice GC. And you're probably thinking, Lantern, you're taking it too far with the titles this time. Primoz Roglic trolling, how's he trolling? Well, before the TT, he put up this Instagram post with a photo taken by Bram Berkian, who takes a lot of the Jumbo Visma photos, they look really good. But you'll notice in the photo that Roglic is wearing the cursed helmet from last year's ITT up Planche de Belfi. So everyone in the comments was like, no! We all know that Roglic went back to his old TT helmet in the Vuelta ITT last year after the Tour de France and he won that time trial. And then in the actual Paris Nice TT, he's wearing the old helmet that he wore in the Vuelta ITT again. So let me know down below, do you think Roglic was trolling? Is it just a photo that he liked and he thought he'd put up I think he's a low-key funny guy, kind of like Chris Froome, and I reckon he might have been poking a bit of fun at everyone talking about the helmet. But what was no joke was Robert's ITT performance yesterday. His first TT on the Cervelo since Jumbo Visma changed over from Bianchi, and Roglic went back to his 2018 20-minute, one-week stage race ITT form and absolutely destroyed this time trial. The best of the GC contenders, putting much more time into them than I expected, and in fact, going into the hot seat four seconds ahead of certain Kra Anderson, and just reiterating why Roglic has been the most dominant one-week stage racer across the last two years. But whilst he might have set a time not to be beaten by any of his GC rivals, the stage win wasn't a lock for Roglic. Remy Cavagna, French national ITT champion, rolled out, and we can't see it here, but I think Cavagna might have been cost the stage win. I think the Alberson Phoenix, the minute man ahead of him, made Cavagna go the long way around the corner, but he still set a new best time of 17.34, six full seconds ahead of Primoz Roglic. Once again, showing on these 15 to 20 minute technical bad road surface, rolly ITTs, the Cavagna is top class. But I think he just got really unlucky yesterday because he ran into the young bull, Stefan Bissiger for EF Education Nippo. If you watch the UAE Tour highlights that I put up and the Paris preview, you'll have already known that Stefan Bissiger is a legit ITT rider, particularly in 10 to 15 kilometer long ITT. He's like an even more compact Maz Pedersen, very strongly built, and he's wearing that Pock Tempo helmet. It would go quicker, obviously, if EF painted a duck on it. Vorta says that Bissiger's got the lowest CDA that they know of. And I guess if Filippo Ganna is the benchmark for time trial riding right now, well, the guy that came about 15 seconds behind him on a 12 kilometer flat ITT a couple of weeks ago is a pretty good shout to be winning a stage like this when Philippe Ogana isn't in attendance. We also saw last year in the Bink Bank Tour in a similar length and style, ITT Bissiger came I think fifth behind Sora Kra Anderson and co 
and he did even better today. He's improved even more, and he finished just 0.8 seconds ahead of Remy Cavagna to take out the stage win for sure. But the question was, would Bissiger, who's just narrowly beaten Cavagna for the stage win, also take the yellow jersey? Because Michael Matthews was last on the course, obviously, wearing the yellow jersey, having come third in the sprint yesterday, taking out those bonus seconds. He needed to just not lose more than 14 seconds to Bissiger to keep the yellow jersey on his back. And Matthews is a pretty good time trial rider in a time trial like this. 15 to 20 minutes in a one-week stage race. I think he's won the Paranese Prologue before. We saw at the intermediate checkpoint for Matthews that he was already looked like he was close to being on the limit. And he set a really good time today for someone like him. But unfortunately for him, that clock just kept ticking. And this last 150 meters of this ITT were an absolute grind. They suit Roglic, someone like that who flew up it, but Bissiger's time just proved to be a bit too much for Matthews, and he still had about 75 metres to go when the 14 seconds ticked over, and he ended up losing the yellow jersey by 9 seconds to Stefan Bissiger. So double success for Bissiger today, winning both the stage and the yellow jersey. But here's the results of the top 10 for the stage. Bissiger first, 0.8 of a second ahead of Cavagna. Roglic third, 6 seconds behind Bissiger, McNulty fourth, nine seconds back, Kran Anderson fifth, 10 seconds back, then Dennis Laporte, Van Baal, Lampart, and Bevan. Bissiger moving into the yellow jersey, and I just want to make a couple of points about riders we didn't see images of. Brandon McNulty, absolutely banging ITT from him, reiterating that he is a very, very good time trial rider, but I want to see how he goes on stage seven, the mountaintop finish, if Ineos or Jumbo Visma launch it up La Colmienne. But I think the scary thing for other GC contenders is Alexander Vlasov's performance today. If you would have told me that Vlasov was going to beat Victor Kampenaz by 10 seconds plus and Teo Gagenhart by over 20 seconds, I would have bet my house against it. Vlasov only lost 16 seconds to Primoz Roglic, which is a massive improvement for him in what was largely a flat individual time trial. And I think he might be the biggest threat for the general classification for Roglic for the rest of this Paris Nice. He's got a really strong Astana Premier Tech team around him. Yoni Zagire, Omar Freyle, Luis Leon Sanchez in good form, Lutschenko as well. Those guys can be aggressive in the middle of medium mountain stages, so watch out for Vlasov. But I already mentioned it, Victor Kampenaz, I don't know what happened with Kampenaz today. He came, I think, 30th, losing over 30 seconds to Bissiga. I obviously thought he was a contender for the stage win and thought he would do much, much better than this. I think he said in an interview that Kampenaz is wanting to focus more on and moving away from the ITT. But without Ghana here in a course that suited him, I think this was a TT that he should have been focusing on. But anyway, tomorrow's stage is going to be really, really hard, if not impossible, for Bisga to keep that yellow jersey. 188k stage, 3,300 metres of climbing with a fake news climb finish to Sharubla. It's really up and down that final climb with sections of flat. Obviously, if a breakaway doesn't win, then this looks like pure Roglic territory to take out the stage win. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like it down below if you did. It helps out the channel a lot, and I'll see you with the highlights of Stage 4 tomorrow. Ciao.